Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles and today is Thursday so I wanted to share with you guys another kind of display on a shikishi uh, or a display board and one of these little guys here and because it's still summertime in Japan and we have a lot of festivals which are kind of like, you know, uh, county fairs or those kinds of a thing if you're used to those that's kind of what they're similar to people get together and eat lots of yummy food and listen to people perform music all those kinds of things uh, so it's a really fun time and I thought I'd kind of create a sort of night scene from that with the lanterns that are really po commonly associated with that kind of feel from the festivals and then we made a while ago a thing called a hoppy which is like a, a little vest that people wear often when they perform in these festivals and so I was going to have somebody kind of in the foreground just sort of zoomed in of that um, but just kind of more object based there's not really any you know true human form it's just sort of implied because of the vest so kind of just a sort of really basic kind of interpretation but um like I say, you don't need to have this kind of a board to make this kind of a display. You can use any board. Uh, map board works really good or just cardboard too. Um, I'm trying to use lots of different layers today. So uh, let's see here. First of all, just to show you guys, I have these lanterns. And I made the lanterns out of uh, taunt paper. Uh, I got all of the colors from this set here of these hundred colors. Um, you can get them from other kinds of collections, um, I think. One of them would have been in the red series, and these other two are in the orange one. If you brought, if you were buying them, like I have the red ones, this this was only one that's in there, I think. But um, so that's what I used for these. Now, just to kind of give you guys an idea, because I did want to try to make it kind of have, a, have some perspective. So I started kind of big in the foreground and then got smaller. So um, my first one was made with 15 by 15 centimeter paper. My second was made with 11.8 by 11.8 centimeter paper. And then the last one that I made was made with 8.7. And you know, it doesn't have to be exact exact. You could have done 11 and a half and eight and a half too. Um, the way I got those dimensions was I used my board and I kind of, I can't even show you guys this with everything that I've got here. But um, if you're familiar with how you do perspective, you just need to have a common point and then everything comes from that point. So knowing that, for example, this space here is the same size as my shikishi or my board, and then knowing that this first one I made with just my standard paper would fit in really nicely in here, then I could um, draw another line to my other point, which is way over here on the other on the other paper. But that gave me that kind of pattern of how, the space that I'd be using so that I could have a little bit of perspective. And then you can get these to line up in a good kind of respect, you know, good perspective way so that they look, they're kind of like descending into the background. So that's just some quick, you know, perspective stuff. <laughs> but then once I kind of had that idea, then I also kind of knew how big I needed the guy uh, dressed in the hoppy to be. And based on the other tutorials, I knew that the dimension proportion is usually about half the size of the size of paper. I knew I wanted this to be about 12 or 13 centimeters because I just want them to kind of be out of the frame and I'm going to cut off the edges actually at the bottom but um, this uh, was then I'd made this uh, out of some paper that's 25 by 25 centimeters and I actually used two sheets of paper because I wanted you know this paper that I used is some handmade paper um, from Korea actually and if I had just used that then I would have just had an all blue hoppy I didn't want that so I used another layer of white and folded those pieces together to give me this effect that you see here so this is just like a jacket I know if it's hard to understand but it, you can imagine that this is the collar up here the arms come out of the sides here uh, so it's just sort of like a little jacket that people wear so um, and then I used the, the uh, proportion the little perspective lines that I have here to create the um, pieces that I want for my general background. I'm, I'm just going to be putting kind of a little bit of black up here in the corner and I just laid that down and then folded up on that line that I had drawn and I'll tear along that edge. And then I knew that the uh, place where the um, lanterns would be, I wanted to use this really nice fibrous brown and so I'm just going to layer that actually. Um, and then tear so that I can get both of these. If I just put this first and then put the black on top. And then at the very end, I know that I'm gonna put a little bit 
of um, brown down here at the bottom to kind of finish things off. So I used a bunch of different pieces of some handmade paper, and um, these, you know, you can use uh, you can use really any kind of paper, but I just thought this would kind of give a little bit of richness to everything. So uh, a lot of stuff sometimes that I do kind of comes from whatever I've got lying around, then I can kind of work from there. So uh, kind of keep that in mind. You don't have to rush out and spend lots of money to get everything. You can kind of play around with it on your own too. So, all right. So the thing I want to do first here is I want to get my um, first layer glued down onto this board, for example. So I've kind of got those two areas sort of completed. Then I know that I'm going to lay this darker color on top. And when I do this darker color, uh, like I said, I've got this part kind of worked out already here, how far I need it to be in that corner. And this the crease that you see here is where I actually want to tear things just to create kind of a fun edge. And um, if you don't like the way that that looks, you can certainly, of course, use just uh, scissors and cut it off if you prefer. But I'm going to go ahead and just try to tear along this edge. Now there's a lot of fiber in this paper, so I might need to kind of work along with it gently, but this is the goal here. Just because this edge always looks so pretty when you can get a nice little fibrous edge going. So that's the piece we're going to be using. I'm just going to go ahead and lay that right across here. And then I'm also going to be obviously cutting off over here on the side so you can kind of line that up and cut it off once you know the dimensions. So I just try to kind of get as much of that edge going as we can. These guys are looking good. And then for the last little step, I'm going to do the same thing with the black and just layer that up at the top. And first, I'm just going to tear along the edge that I have here. And this is just kind of giving me those lines of perspective that I created too before. And it'll help you kind of work when you're trying to set stuff up. Now, you could just leave the whole scene the way it is and not even bother with this extra layer in the background. If you wanted to just have lanterns on a white board, you could do that too. Um, on my other projects, I tended to leave everything a little white in the background, but I thought I'd try layering up some paper this time. I certainly think if you guys get a chance to visit Japan during the summer, it's insanely hot and miserable, but the chance to get to see the festivals is really fun. So, so I've got all three of those kind of layers laid out now there for that, and then I can just take my lanterns here and kind of line them up at different intervals here to sort of create the scene. And if you wanted to, you could kind of use uh, like a string or something here because I use the different layers. I don't really think I have room for that as an extra element too, but I'm just gonna leave what I've got here. Now the lanterns do get to be kind of thick, so it helps to kind of give them a chance to lay flat somewhere if you can. Um, underneath some books, um, underneath something on your desk that's really heavy, your computer or something, that can always help. So I'm just going to kind of lay this guy here. And different towns in Japan have different kind of styles for these lanterns, different places kind of famous for certain kinds, different displays, different dances that they do, all those things. So, uh, you know, one festival in one place is not going to be the same as it is in another, so. Let's space these out right if I can. And I went ahead and tried to keep, you know, the brighter ones at the front and the little darker ones in back. They tend to be sort of reddish in color, but then they glow with light inside of them, so they become kind of orangish or yellow. So that kind of gives the scene kind of set there with these lanterns. And then, like I said, I've got my little guy with a huppy down here. I'm just going to go ahead and put him down here somewhere if I can. 
So I've got my little um, hoppy here now, and I'm just going to kind of line him up actually in this corner to kind of cover up that spot where I didn't have any paper. And it'll essentially kind of cut out half of the arm sleeve here, but I just want it to be like he's kind of poking into the seam. So first, before I do anything else, I'm just going to go ahead and cut the side off of my origami. And you want to just double check to make sure when you do this, depending on the piece you're working with, that you haven't now made anything fly away that you might need to glue down to make sure everything doesn't fall apart. But this seems to be holding together okay, so I can go ahead and put some glue here on the back. And like I said, these tend to always work really good if you can keep them kind of secured for an evening too, so that you can have sort of everything, make sure it's all snug in the way it needs to be. It doesn't pop up weird. So when you're finished you should have everything kind of smushed down on here and if you want to keep things a little flatter you can leave it underneath something for a while to keep it nice and flat but that kind of just gives you sort of a, a sort of snapshot of a scene of a festival kind of environment with the lanterns on the street and somebody walking down the street there. Um, it's just sort of like a kind of abstract sort of look at it, I suppose. But um, yeah, if you guys get a chance to do any of these kinds of things and create your own dis designs to kind of showcase your origami, I think it's always a really fun thing to do to kind of finalize something. It makes a great gift, too. So um, yeah, give it a try. And if you guys have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I'll have another fun design for you guys next week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.